Okay, so I'm really excited about, about this next portion. Um, you guys have all had experience now. Actually, I'm going to use this other microphone. You guys have now all had experience um, singing responsibly, creating choruses. Who's, who's created a chorus in their worship teams or in their sets? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, a couple people. And so today I want to um, give a, a few tips, and we're going to have actually Daniel and Sharon and Marvin and I are all going to coach you a little bit. Um, I'm saying that out loud because Marvin doesn't know that yet. I'm just going to throw him in. Um, and so I just want to give a few tips on, um, on singing responsibly. So just a few things that come to mind that really have helped me in my journey is number one, um, sing boldly. Um, so this is, um, this is one of the big things that is so important. No right boldness, so I can all, ooh, this side of the marker is way better. Um, so this is a huge thing. Sometimes we might not be so comfortable with our voices yet, or we might not be so comfortable with responsive singing. Um, raise your hand if it was your first time really doing responsive singing here at this, this weekend. Okay, so, so like half of us, it's our first time ever. So the fact that it's like our first time, it's, there's just a lot, even emotionally, that I really just think the enemy doesn't want us to sing. He doesn't want us to proclaim the word of God into the atmosphere and to, um, to the heavenly host, to the demonic host, to people around us. So I think he tries to silence us. But then there are also so many practical things like, oh, I'm not sure of my voice. I'm not sure if I'm singing on key. I'm, I'm new to ear training, all these things. Um, so boldness, even wherever you're at in your journey, whether you're a beginner singer, whether you're a professional singer, Boldness is so key in singing. So when you're singing responsibly, open up your mouth, take a deep breath, sing it out. If it's off key, you'll try to not be off key next time. Hey, Izzy. Um, so that's, that's like probably, probably honestly the number one thing I see when singers really improve in responsive singing, chorus leading, is their, is their level of boldness. And so when I see people even get, and this is in my own life as well, when I have mindsets broken off of me about um, just comparison, fear of man, that's actually when my songs become more prophetic because I'm not so focused on myself, and they actually become more clear. People are able to engage because I'm not shrinking back in fear. So it's not, so boldness is not haughtiness. It's actually serving, um, serving the room serving the Lord's purposes and proclaiming what he has called us to proclaim. So sing boldly, which means loudly, clearly. Obviously, there's different times when you sing loudly and softly. You guys all know that. Um, but loudly, clearly, confidently. So boldness. Number two, um, how will I call this? Um, I'll just put this here and I'll explain it. Uh, I don't like this word for it, but so when you're singing responsibly, um, you want to, as much as possible, not leave gaps between your responsive singing. Again, these are guidelines. As the Holy Spirit moves, it might be like one person sings something, and then there's a few minutes, and then another person sings something. But I'm just talking about in the typical, typical foundational way that we do it. Sing like like follow up quickly so if someone sings something as soon as possible sing the next thing and then it, it creates this um this like juggling effect like just passing things back and forth um which means there aren't like the awkward silences um so that's been really really helpful when I see different teams, the, even just the sound of the teams and the way the, team is able, the room is able to engage often depends on if, um, and all, honestly, a lot of it goes back to boldness, if uh, people are singing out um, and not taking a long time to think about their phrases. And also I've noticed that, um, that when we think too much about our phrase, sometimes it actually hinders our ability. A lot with responsive singing, you want it just to come from your heart. Um, 
just come from your heart and um, and just come from what the Lord's saying. So, so again, it really a lot of these things are going to come back to boldness. Um, because if you have boldness, you're willing to just step out there, throw the first thing out that comes to your mind. Um, so number three. Um, um, if you, the power of singing biblically is huge. So sometimes, especially when I first started doing um, responsive singing, I think I shared this with my team, um, but I wanted to come up with something like profound. You know, you hear those people that just have this like, just, they just sing all these profound things. And you're like, How on earth do they even come up with that? I want to sing something really profound. But, um, and there will be those times when you won't st sing straight from the Bible. But um, when we sing biblically, when our responsive phrases are biblical, number one, it is the most prophetic, the most profound. It is from the heart of God to humanity. It's like these, any phrases that you pull out of the Bible are just like the most profound. It helps to engage the room, second, because um, we're all from, we're probably all from very different um, backgrounds. Uh, I grew up in a more Baptist background. I know that we probably have some people that are definitely from a more Pentecostal background or just various different backgrounds that we come from. And the one thing that promotes unity like nothing else is the Word of God. And if we can sing the Word of God straight from the truths of God, either whether that's word for word or um, just a little bit of paraphrasing, it helps to engage the room because no matter what your belief are, beliefs are on on some of these third level doctrines, like we're able to connect around the word and around the truths that we see in the word. So I highly recommend sing biblically as much as possible, which means we're going to have to go deep in the word. Um, Aaron talked about this a little bit. It's, it's like singing responsively is like a singing seminary. And you, uh, you learn the word as you sing it, but then you also realize your barrenness in the word. You realize, oh, I actually don't know the word. We are coming to this one theme in the Bible. Um, I just don't know how to sing, even though it's really biblical. I don't know any cross-references. Um, I don't know... I just haven't gone there myself. So it'll force you to go deep in the word, and, but it also connects connect people and it's just the most um, the most profound things and then uh, number four this one's really key as well um, listen to one another uh, again kind of goes back to boldness when we're so internally focused it can be really really easy to just only think about what we're what the next thing that we're going to try to sing is but something that's so helpful is listening to our teammates because there is an unfolding tapestry that the Lord is going to speak through your whole team. Every team dynamic is going to be different. Every set is going to be different what the Lord speaks. So listen, listen to your team members and also listen to the Holy Spirit. So as difficult as it is, especially at the beginning, take your eyes off of yourself. Don't worry so much about the key, if you're on key, or exactly what your tone sounds like, but listen to, listen to your, um, your friends that you're doing the set with, and actively listen to the Holy Spirit and what he is, what he is highlighting in the set, and it'll be really beautiful. So those are some of, some of the key things that have helped me, but again, so much of it goes back to, so much of it goes back to boldness, and just saying, Lord, I believe that you've written your word on my heart, I believe, um, that you have anointed and called all believers to sing. If you just look in the word, the amount of times that um, God commands us to sing in the Bible is like crazy. Um, so many. Um, and, and just believing that when you open your mouth, things are shifted in heaven and on earth. So, so those are, yes, yes, please. Yes, perfect. That's a really good one. So, yeah, singing short phrases is so good. Um, like, I'm literally talking like four to five words. Um, it helps like that, again, that juggling feeling, like tossing the ball back and forth to your team members. Um, and it's just more engaging for the room. Has anyone else found things that are helpful in your sets? Things to do. Okay. So let's do some, so yeah, sing with boldness, 
I don't like this word, but I couldn't think of another one this morning, but like pass the ball off quickly and don't leave big spaces. Sing biblically, listen to one another, and sing short phrases. So, all right, so what we're actually going to do is we are going to take some time to practice um, stretching ourselves in um, singing responsibly. Uh, and so I'm going to split everyone up into groups. I'm going to number you one through three. And actually, Marvin, could you, um, could you play guitar and give us some, just an easy chord progression? So I'm going to number us off one through three. And so all the ones will um, go right back here to this corner. All of the twos will go right over here, and all the threes will come up here, okay? So one, twos, and threes. So, okay, so number one, two, and maybe hold up your number. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Would you like to do it as well? One, Jedediah, your two, Samuel, your three, one, two, three. One, uh, one, two, okay. So everyone, so ones, yeah, so ones back here, twos over here, and then threes up here. And then, great. Yeah, so one, two, three, great. I think you're a three. I think. Huh? Yeah, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Stay here. So, uh, so your coaches are going to give you feedback on some different things that can help. So, you guys are all doing well, really well. I loved hearing your sets, but like Sharon, Daniel, and I are just going to give a few keys. If we're if we're sensing that a phrase is really long. Um, we're going to say, hey, try a shorter phrase or, um, or try to sing, challenge yourself to sing something more biblical. Think of a cross-reference. So we'll all do that sort of thing. And Daniel, will you be back here with this, this team? No. Just, just maybe like one, five, six, four. Yeah, oh yeah. So well, let's, do, let's do worship with the word. Psalm 23, verse 1. Let's just do that. And it's developing, uh, sorry, did I, we're not going to develop choruses. We're just going to strictly do responsive singing, okay? So we'll just practice getting into the flow of that. And just as a reminder, the three, who can tell me the three ways to sing responsively? Repeat, rephrase, and cross-reference. So repeat word for word, rephrase using your own words, or cross-reference using another passage of scripture. So let's jump in. So we'll probably do this for about 10, 10 minutes or so.
Okay, good job, guys. So let's um, bring it back in for a moment. It's okay. Okay, good job. Anyone just do one or two people have a little bit of feedback? Does anyone have things that they learned? Things that were like a breakthrough for them? Is that a raised hand? Or, oh no, it's just an air adjustment. I think it's easier concentrating on a smaller group than you can hear. Uh huh, uh huh, I agree. No, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Good, um, great job. I know that I think probably everyone saw this, but I know even just for my team, the, the progress with just a little bit of a few tweaks makes such a difference in the enjoyability, engaging nature of, of the responsive singing. So good job. And we weren't even doing choruses yet, which are the most responsive and engaging. Mm. So she said, mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's saying, yeah, uh, so Phoebe was saying that as, as we started to sing together and even more listen to each other and build on each other, um, that she was able to visualize, it painted a picture more of the passage instead of each person doing their own, their own thing. So really good. Okay, so the next thing, yeah, no. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 so that's one thing, I'm sure you guys are all learning now, but you're going to leave in two days, and you'll be the teachers of Harp and Bowl, um, and so, yeah, so, so that's one thing, sometimes it feels like, oh my goodness, uh, and this even just uh, reminds me of how the Lord leads sometimes, but sometimes it feels like, oh my goodness, if we just, we just need to leave an entire chapter open for people, they can choose, just let people do whatever they want, it'll make it easier for them. But actually as leaders, sometimes it's so important for us to communicate and, and give actual focus and clarity for where we want to go in the passage. It reminds me of the Lord, like the, the world says, oh, it'll be better if you can do anything. There are no bounds on morality, there's no bounds on anything. And actually it crushes our spirits. Um, and, but the Lord says, no, this is the way, walk in this way, and it brings life to our souls, because we know how to follow him, and um, so it's, so when you're leading, don't be hesitant to be like, we're just going to do the first line of Psalm 23, and we're going to stay here for however long, so just helping people narrow in, just our minds, it's easier for us to focus on one thing instead of trying to swallow up a whole chapter. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I'm just saying that, you know, that's really the reason that Jesus had to be man because God was so big and then as he became man he was embodied so we could comprehend more of who God is because he has flesh, you know. Yeah, and the one um, analogy or example I always give for, um, for singing the word um, is like we're digging for treasure. And, um, and so we all have a shovel and, um, and we can all find a place to dig and any theme that comes out of the verse is, um, is a good, could be a great place to start digging for treasure because there is so much in the word. But what happens if we all dig in different places, we have all these different holes, which can be great, but if we dig in the same place, we get to the treasure so much faster. I told my team this too, and it helps us all engage and, and unearth it much quicker and go much deeper together. And that's so enjoyable if we're doing it together and being on the same page. So I don't even feel it as like boundary lines restricting, but actually focusing together and helping, yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so just find that you have to have like a, I don't know, unity or team dynamic when you're, or a good team dynamic when you're like singing the word. I mean, I find with prayer, it's already that way, but I find with singing, it's more, or I don't know, I just feel more vul vulnerable when I'm singing, I guess, because, probably because I'm not done it before, but I feel like you have to do like, have that like unity, like, and when you have like, you feel like, okay, we're a team, then you're gonna be also more bold because the others are not gonna restrict you. I don't know, like, just, yeah. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. It's, it's, singing is just vulnerable. Music is vulnerable. And I think the Lord made it that way. It's like you're bearing your soul. And it's, music is just different. And so one thing I highly recommend as you go and you build houses of prayer, as you strengthen houses of prayer, and you bring uh, team culture back, bring a culture of encouragement. Because there's nothing that crushes prophetic songs like, um, like uh, cutting uh, comments, sarcasm, uh, lack of encouragement. So just make a point to set a to set a culture of uh, encouragement. Yes, giving feedback about real things that are going on. You don't need to shy away from that. But the bulk of what you say to one another about your songs, about what you're bringing forth from the word, probably needs to be po ten positives to every negative. Like, different in every culture, I understand. But like, but you need to be affirming people much more than you're correcting them and trying to change them. Amen to what you just said, and that's how the Lord is with us anyway, so we need to be mirroring the way he trains us. But my two things were, one, I, I have still trouble when we're doing the antiphonal singing because I want to be on beat, and so I there's like a pause because like I notice you guys just sing over the rhythm, kind of, and that's okay, but it's a struggle, so like, I'll be waiting mm -hmm, for, for the beat to start. And so I got to get used to not doing that a little bit. And then the other thing was, uh, for those that were here last year, what you, I'm, I just saw the um, correlation between what Kirk Bennett taught us about meditating on the word. And um, we're l literally doing the exact same thing, but just in song. Yeah. And I'll just say one thing about um, feeling like that singing on beat. So, uh, Marvin, can you play a quick anything, any chord progression? So, so each as as we were learning with Daniel yesterday, uh, Tuesday, there are you, typically in most music there are four beats in every measure. Okay. So, as you'll see. Can you do 4-4? Four, four? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Prove me wrong this one time. So that's usually how we feel like we need to do it, which is fully okay. Um, but that's sometimes why we feel like we have that break, that you are isolating. So what we want to challenge ourselves to, it might even help to count so you kind of get out of the rhythm. Um, not off rhythm, but like out of that cadence of starting only on the first beat. So we're going to play again. And I'll show you, I'll, um, I'll count and I'll start in different places in the measure, okay? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. trying to start in different places it makes it much more fluid and it makes it not feel like we're singing the same phrase every time sometimes it can feel like we're singing the same melody but if you say I'm only gonna start on I'm gonna try to start on the three the third beat 
or something like that, it can help. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Good, of course. Okay, so we're going to take the next little bit. Hopefully, hopefully we can get to, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so next we're going to work on choruses. You guys are doing great. Choruses are extremely important um, to bring the team together. Because if you can sing responsibly, you can go deep, but you also want to bring the room in to it, and choruses are the perfect way to do that. And so um, we just want to talk about choruses a little bit. A lot of the same things with responsive singing apply to choruses. This one, specifically, boldness. When you're singing a chorus, more important than being on key, to be honest, is that you sing it out and you sing it boldly because eventually you'll figure it out and you'll get on key. Obviously, you want to sing on key if you can. But boldness, if you can sing boldly, then the room has something to, to sing with. Um, and then biblical, this is one ex extremely important. Um, if we sing something that's not biblical, did you have a question? Okay, just stretching. Oh, yes. Biblical, yes to biblical. Okay. Yeah, if we sing something biblical, like literally straight out of the Bible, it is so much easier to sing. You, there are quite a few times in various houses of prayer, big ones or small ones, um, that the people on the team start singing something that's not biblical, and I want to sing along and engage, but it's like, I just don't, and even if I, if, even if maybe, I don't even know if it's not biblical, but I'm like, can we really like... I don't know, can I really sing that or not? But if we take specifically biblical prayers, biblical phrases, biblical paraphrases, that's going to be the most powerful instead of saying like, I've seen, I've even heard other good choruses like, I see angels, there are angels in this room. And I'm like, I don't know if I can sing that because there are, but it's just, it's just a little bit harder for people of different, different backgrounds. So if you can sing like, Instead of singing, there are angels in this room, you can sing like, where two or more are gathered, the Lord is there. So it's a similar thing, but it's something that without, without, without a doubt, like we can all agree on. And it, there isn't the like trickiness of trying to figure out, oh, do I really believe this? I, wanna, I want to sing along, but I don't know if I want to, you know. Um, sing biblical things. Um, and then... This one also, like, what we want a chorus to be is we want it to be a summary of what the Lord's showing. So that tapestry that the Lord is releasing through each one of our responsive songs, we want to, as the chorus leader, which can be a unique challenge, and it's really an art, is to, as best as possible, weave together what the Lord's saying and put it into one phrase. So it's like when you're writing a whole paper, like a paper for school or whatever, and you want to have that thesis statement. Um, you want to do that in the form of a chorus. So summing up for people what the Lord's been saying through that. Um, this one, not, this is not exactly, but simple, okay? We want, we want it to be simple enough that the room can engage. Um, and so that your team can quickly engage as well. So if it is like 12 lines long and extremely difficult, um, difficult melodies, it's going to be really hard for, number one, the team to engage, number two, the room to engage, and also for you to sing that accurately over and over. Um, and so you might have this great idea and be able to sing it once, but can you sing it again? Pro maybe not. So you want it to be simple, especially as you're learning. Um, that's really, really key. Um, I, would also, I would also say, um, there's another thing. And then, and then also uh, with listening, not only listening to each other and summarizing that sort of thing, you also want to really listen to the music because the way that the chords go, um, like it depend, where your melody can go depends on where the chords go. So if you want to just play a little progression, just the, a simple, the same one maybe that we had before. So first there's just singing off key, totally. So you want to make sure you're understanding which key you're in, which if you're doing responsive singing, you'll probably be on key. Um, so if you're just singing in a fully different key, not sing on key here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I'm actually singing still. It's, 
it's still in another key, so it's right, technically, but I'm just not listening to him and I'm not singing with his, with his um, chords. <laughs> and then, um, number two, you want to listen to the chord changes, okay? Um, so you, so it's all, a lot of it's just, you'll learn it over time, but I just want to give a few of these ideas for you to listen to. Okay, so hard to do it not right on purpose. I sing off key plenty, but I'm doing it on purpose in front of everyone, let's see. Anyway, so I think you understand maybe you just like listening to the, making sure your voice doesn't like, your voice doesn't clash with the chords. So maybe your coaches can help you if that's happening. It's really hard for me to just try to do it on the spot. Um, okay, so those are a few things. And then the, the second thing I want to talk about is some different forms of a chorus, okay? So you can do, um, so you can do, I'm going to just erase this one here. So you can do a few different things. Um, oh, one thing I also want to say, as you grow as a chorus leader, I encourage you, we were working on this in our team, incorporating different melodies. Because sometimes it can be so easy to sing, sing like, Lord send the rain, Lord send the rain, Lord send the rain. Lord send the rain, and that's correct, and it's good, but as you're developing as a chorus leader, it's often more engaging when you use different melodies. So can you, okay. So I'm gonna do the just straight one first, and then I'll do it with some different melodies, and you'll feel the difference. But both are good, but you just wanna have many tools in your pocket. Lord send the rain, Lord send the rain, There's nothing wrong with that, and I often use those kind of things. But then we'll, I'll do it again with a little bit, same words, but a little bit of a different melodies. Just, both are good, but you just want to have different keys to express what the, what the Lord is um, saying. So that's one thing. Try to do different melodies, and then also try to do different rhythms. Again, this one was like, da 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 So you could do, uh, even if I was going to use the same note, can you play again? You can use different rhythms, even if you're using the same note. Stay on one note. Lord, send the rain. Send the rain. Okay, so you can just even play with different different rhythms. So, so practicing different. Melodies. Okay. Um, and then, um, so then there are a couple other forms as well. We call them forms. So there's like A, 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 B, A, B, A, 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 B, A, B, A, C. Let's say that. Um, so, so often when we're starting, ugh, ugh. No, I just don't want the fans to dry these markers out. Okay, often when we're starting, we use the same phrase, like 
multiple times in a row when we're creating our course. Okay, I'm gonna back up um, for one second. I think you guys are all aware of this because I've heard in your sets that you're doing this quite well. But um, each chord progression has a certain number of chords and typically it has, uh, there are four measures in a chord progression, okay? So sit, play that same chord progression again. So we can feel the, where the beat is. But then he's also playing a, say, a pattern of chords over and over, okay? And there's the beginning, which is right here. One measure of four beats, two measures, three measures. Okay? And then he starts again. And it's the same. So, however long that chord progression is, that's how long you want your chorus to be. Okay? So, in this case, and in most cases, especially when you're starting, you'll have four measures. So, you want your chorus to be four measures long. Okay? So, it can be... So, let's talk about A-A-A-A, which is... Um, okay, first of all, does that make sense about the four measures long chord progression that loops over and over? Does that not make sense to anyone? What'd you say? Yeah, it's great. Um, so let's talk about it for a second longer. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, what, are you, what are the chords you're playing? Okay, well, let's just pretend you're in C because this will not complicate things. Uh, e, C sharp minor, uh, A, B. Okay, so these are the chords he's playing. Um, but, but he's in D. I'll just say he's in E. I thought he said E. So we'll just uh, for, just play, keep playing in D and we'll just not <laughs> care. Okay. Okay, so, so this is the chord progression he's playing. Okay, so these are the four chords he's going to play over and over again. And he's going to play each one for four beats. Just stay in the same key. Okay. The music nerds are rebelling here. Okay, so each each chord he plays for four beats. Ready? One, two, three, four. Then he switches. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And he'll just actually just keep playing that exact same thing over and over. Does that make a little more sense? Okay. So, so we want our we want our chorus to cover this whole thing. Okay. Because if it only covers this much, and then you start over, then it goes to this. Like it, it just it won't it won't match up. So you want um, you want, if the chord progression is four, be if four measures long, then you want your chorus to be four measures long. Does that make sense? Okay, so, um, so there are a few ways to do this. I wouldn't recommend doing different words for every, every one of the four measures, because that's a lot. But I would, here are a couple things that I would recommend. Um, so let's say it's actually D, B minor, G, A. Okay, so these are the chords that he's playing. Um, how many people have perfect pitch in here? We're fine. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so for the D chord, there's a, there's a way to do this. For the D chord, for those four, first four uh, beats, sing one thing then sing it again, then sing it again, then sing it again, okay? You can sing it the same thing four times during the four chords of the progression. So here's an example of that that we just did, okay. Lords and the rain, Lords and the rain, Lords and the rain, Lords and the rain, Lords and the rain. So I'm singing the same phrase but it's going for every one of these. So it's kind of like A part, A part, A part, A part. Does that make sense? 
So that's one way to do it. Then there's A part, B part, A part, B part, okay? So I'm going to sing one phrase, and then I'm going to sing another one, and then I'm going to go back to my first one, and then go back to my second one. Okay, so... The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, does that make sense? So it's still, you're still covering the four measures, but you're switching it. Any questions on that one? Okay, I think it's pretty clear. Or you can sing one phrase and then go to a second phrase on the end. These are all just different ideas to mix it up so all of your choruses don't sound the same. Because that's really possible. And in, when you're singing for two hours, you want to keep it fresh and engaging for the people that are listening and for yourself because it's more fun that way. All right, so same chord progression. I'm just going to sing the same chorus. But, uh, no. So that's another idea. Let's go to this one. So one phrase, another phrase, the same phrase, and then a different phrase. Okay? Okay? Okay, one other one I want to give. And again, these are all just different examples to get you thinking of other ways to do your courses. Okay, so there's also a possibility that a phrase will take up two measures. Okay? Okay, so it take, will take up two measures. <laughs> different sides of this pencil are so different. And then... Um, or even that it could take up four measures. Again, the, like the options are endless, okay? Um, this one, I don't recommend. It's gonna be hard for your team, most likely, unless it's not, unless it's something like really catchy or something. So let's do this one, and then after, after this, we'll split up into our groups and practice some of these different, these different um, forms, okay. If 
friend than any other man. Does that make sense? Okay, good. And then last one, we'll just do it. We'll see if we actually do it in our groups. I'll check in with the coaches to see how everyone's doing. Okay, four measures long. With this one, you're gonna want a simple melody. You're gonna want simple words. You're probably gonna want longer, longer notes. So it's not like, like a whole paragraph in four, four measures and everyone's like, how do I sing this? Because I can't even remember the words. Okay, but let's do this one. Also, it helps with these longer ones to actually do a Bible passage because it's easier to remember like what you've already memorized. So I'll just use Psalm 23 for example. different options to instead of just doing this one or this one for your whole set you have a lot to choose from and many more than this you could do yeah there are just other options that you could do um, and so so okay so now let's split up into um, question. yes How consciously are you thinking of AAA or ABA? it's a great question I am not usually thinking about it Except, um, but you may want to think about it at first. When you're first learning how to make courses, especially if maybe you haven't heard a ton of spontaneous courses, one idea is to get yourself more familiar is to listen to the International House of Prayer Kansas City uh, web stream. They do choruses, and you can even break them down, be like, what kind of chorus are they making right now? Um, for me, I was so blessed to be able to be in the prayer room for six months before I ever started making my own courses, really. Maybe I would do a little bit, but um, so I was used to hearing the different options. Um, but I would say as you start, start thinking about options if you're feeling like it's kind of monotonous. But once you start, after you know six months or even less of doing courses, just different ideas will come to your come into your head. And so I don't honestly, I don't ever really think, I don't ever really think of um, the this structure, uh, except if the chord progression is really hard. Let's say Marvin is doing a normal, like they sound like normal chords, and then he puts like a chord in that's not really a part of the key. So then I think, okay, this part is coming up, so now I need this other section. So unless the corporation is hard, I usually never, never think about this structure. Great question. How often do you think of it, Daniel? I don't. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I, I think now how this could maybe be good to expand the range ah, of yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, just expanding your options and possibilities. Okay, good. Um, I want to mix up teams a little bit. So um, so I'm going to number you guys off again, and we're going to make choruses, all of us, to our own ability. So number one, number two, number three, number one in the back, number two, number three, number one. Can you hold up your numbers so I know who I've numbered so far? Number two. Number three, number four, Linda? Number five, uh, sorry, four, number one. <laughs> one, two, uh, three, uh, one, two, three, one. Everyone have a number? Really? Okay, how about Maureen and Amy switch? Maureen and Amy switch. Okay, and then and uh, okay, you can switch some if you want. Okay, good. So now, 
So team number one here, team number one here, team number two here, team number three back there, okay? One, two, three. And I'm gonna tell you guys which form to use. Okay. Okay, and, is that okay? Also, um, uh, language-wise, because um, um, you could uh, um, do, do it anything, or uh, let's say on a theme, or uh, even through. sing a uh, sing a script. Just just sing, just, just use this yes. line and make uh, yeah. make this. Yeah. I don't know what. Yep. Yep. Let's yeah. I'll, I'll explain. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Oh, here you are again. Great. I'm glad you have it again. Yeah. So again, um, we're going to stand in a circle here. All right. So this is what we're going to do, guys. We're going to, you can use, okay, so also, this is fun. Not only in responsive singing do you do repeat, uh, wow, I just, I just blanked, rephrase reference. Um, but you also do that in your choruses. So you can do exact word for word from the passage. You can rephrase it in your own words, or you can use another passage um, from the Bible that talks about the same thing. So it's the same thing in your choruses. Um, and so uh, we're going to use Psalm 23, verse 1 and 2. We can use any of those concepts, and we're going to make choruses, okay? Um, we're going to just go around, and Marvin is going to play again. If you want to just stay with the same progression, since people's ears are already adjusted to it. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go around the circle, and we're going to make choruses. The first one we're going to make is we're going to use this first one, A, 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 A. So same phrase, four times. It's the simplest one. Um, are you with us? Awesome. Good. We have six somehow. Does everyone else have six? Five? Okay, good. I think we just have added a little, a few more since um, we did our last exercise. Okay, so we're all going to just make a, um, we're all going to make a chorus um, and just sing it one or two times so we can, so we can get through everyone, okay? And I might switch it in the middle, like a few people might get to do, I'll just say, in the microphone when we're going to switch to the next part, okay? So into the next form. All right, so Marvin, take it away. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a chorus first from this, um, but I won't do it in the microphone. So the coaches can maybe just demonstrate a chorus. Yeah, straight into chorus and do a chorus as quickly as you can. If it's not perfect, meh, it doesn't matter. If it's not the coolest chorus, it doesn't matter. So we just want to get, we just want to get comfortable um, with choruses. So, so start with A, 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 A form.
Daniel's team, if you want to go into the back, you can. You know, you know it's the best way. We're stealing all of David's choruses as well, so. And you guys can even move back as well, if you're fine, yeah. Yeah, Jedediah, where are you? Oh, good. Okay, so Marvin's gonna turn up the guitar and... Huh? Yeah, and he actually just turned it up on his, yeah. Good, okay, so now let's move to A, B, A, B. Um, so wherever you're at, next person, switch uh, to A, B, A, B chorus. So one phrase, another phrase, the same first phrase, the second first phrase. Okay, now you get thrown in, woo! switch again to A A A B okay you got this girl all right so coaches A A A B
Okay. We're going to go to A, B, A, C now. Okay? So one phrase, and then another phrase, then back to that phrase, then to a different phrase. Okay, so one thing I also want to say to all the teams, um, it's really easy to get into a pattern of the same melody um, for every chorus. And so to keep it, so to keep it fresh, try to do different rhythms like we we're talking about and different melodies. So you could do it, um, yeah, so your coaches can talk to you about that, but try doing different rhythm, rhythms and different melodies. Music. Um, okay, so um, you notice, like right now it's, um, maybe you can stop for one sec, um, um, that usually the singers and musicians are working together really closely. Uh, the musicians are um, coming up with a music progression that um, that fits with the passage and that enables the singers to then sing. And right now, Marvin, it's harder for Marvin. Well, he hears you, but he, he doesn't hear us singing or you. So to really bounce off of each other is, is harder, right? Um, but that will be, um, uh, we don't have the time to go into the, the musical um, side or the instrumental side of helping um, the singers. But it's a really good thing as musicians to think about how can I change things up, not necessarily dramatically, but just make it, give it a different flavor so that it's not the same over and over. And that will enable and help the singers to also not do the same over and over, but switch it up and keep it fresh. Yeah? Good. All right. So we just have about five more minutes. So let's, let, yeah, so let's do this. Okay, so A, B, A, C. So now we're going to switch to A for two measures and B for two measures. You've got it. And remember for this one, it's helpful to do, um, it's helpful to do a passage of scripture because a lot of people are already familiar with the words. Okay. So, or you can do whatever you want, but that's helpful.
last chorus, guys. A for all four measures. If you can do it, or if you're, if you're not comfortable, then maybe the coach can just uh, give an example of A for four, A for four measures. But I think everyone on your team is gonna do it. All right, so last chorus. There we go, all right. Good job, guys. I would love to practice longer, but it is time to wrap up. Really good job, everyone. Well, at least on my team, you guys were killer. Uh, give yourselves a hand. <laughs>